please hit that subscribe button. Hey everybody. Better suited to win the Stanley Cup this season. If you are new to the channel, Washington Capitals, the Boston Bruins. Locked on any scores, and we're live. Hey everybody. So today I want to talk about the Edmonton Oilers and specifically what I think they should do about their goaltending situation, which uh, right now has Miko Koskinen as the backup signed for two more seasons beyond this year. And Mike Smith, who is 38 years old, been around the league a long time and is a UFA at the end of this season. Before we start, I just ask that you please hit that subscribe button if you're new and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't already as those likes really do go a long way and help out a lot. But let's get into it here. So Edmonton is a team that obviously has Connor McDavid, has Leon Dreisaddle, is one of those young up-and-coming teams that is supposed to be a consistent playoff contender for the foreseeable future, a Stanley Cup contender in the future, a team that is really looking to to win from this point on. Obviously, it's been a few years since they've been in the playoffs. Um, they had to stink for a really, really long time to finally get this group together. But now they're starting to come out of that. They played really well this season. They were, are a playoff-level team this season. And it looks like the Edmonton Oilers are finally starting to you know, be the team that they're supposed to be with McDavid and, uh, and Drysaddle. And they've got a good young defense core that continues to get better and improve and is really starting to come into their own. They've got some really good young forwards with some solid veteran pieces mixed in there as well. They're a tough team. They can play big boy hockey as we've seen this season. And really over the past number of years, they've never been a team that shied away from physicality, which means that's really good come playoff time. They are built for the playoffs. Um, you know, there's a, there's a lot of things to like about this Edmonton Oilers team. And I think that they should and will be a you know, perennial playoff team for the foreseeable future. The one big question with them is their goaltending. Now, it, Mike Smith played really well this year, and I got to give him credit for that, but he's 38 years old. He's at the back end of his career. He is not a long-term answering goal. Miko Koskinen, solid backup, adequate backup to say the least, but he's not going to be a guy I don't think that starts for your team, you know, 60, 70, you know, 60, 65 games a year and, you know, leads the team to the postseason. He's also 31 years old, so it's not like you have a 23-year-old who's backing up for a couple years and then maybe becoming the franchise goalie. He's 31. He's a backup goaltender. Edmonton's got a couple of choices. Well, I guess they've got you know more than that, but they've got two, I think, distinct choices because... I really don't think waiting or you know drafting a, a franchise level goaltender now at 18 years old and waiting for them to really you know get be developed become NHL ready and come into the league at you know 23 24 25 and take over that starting job that's something that would take you know 3 4 years to do and Edmonton's not in a position where they're waiting 3 4 years anymore before their you know their their franchise goalie comes in Edmonton's in a position where they want to win now and they need to win now i mean they've got McDavid they've got Drysaddle they've got a team that can win now, that's proven that they can win this season. They've got a good young defense core, relatively young defense core, that's you know only going to keep getting better with the likes of Ethan Bear and uh, Caleb Jones and Evan Bouchard continuing to gain experience, continuing to get better as they get older and, and play more games. Um, you know, they're not looking for a goalie that they're going to have to wait three, four, five years for. They need somebody who they can win with now. And now their one of their options is to continue to go the veteran route uh, like they did with Mike Smith, bringing him in this year, maybe going on a on a two, three-year deal type contracts with different goaltenders, you know, hoping that, you know, they're good enough that one season where they can maybe go out and compete for a cup. Um or maybe they go with the long term, with the big, the big veteran, the big long term potential veteran. Obviously, is Braden Holtby. This is kind of the third option. Is they could be the team that goes out and signs Braden Holtby to the big, massive contract, the Bobrovsky light contract that you know is six, seven years long, and gives him a ton of money to be their goaltender, and they can bet on Braden Holtby to be the franchise goalie for the next six years. That's risky. 
Braden Holtby had a terrible season this year. A terrible season. He's 30 years old. Generally, players don't get better after they cross that 30 threshold. For the most part, they start going the other way. Now, we saw, we've seen Marc-Andre Fleury, who you know was pretty old when he went to Vegas, still play at an elite level for Vegas. And we've seen Fleury now at, what, 35, 36, 37, playing really well for Vegas. Holtby, though, is coming off his worst season of his career. Do you really trust him? Now, I think he'll be better next year. Yes, I think he's going to be better next year. Braden Holtby is a much better goaltender than what we saw this year. Is he ever going to get back to that elite top five NHL goalie, Braden Holtby? I don't know. Do you commit to a guy at, who's 30 years old coming off a career worst season to a long-term deal like that. I don't know if that's the smart thing for a team like Edmonton to do. The other thing is we've seen what's happened with Bobrovsky. Bobrovsky was lights out, Vesna-level goaltender with the Columbus Blue Jackets. Signs a massive, massive deal with Florida this past offseason, and he was atrocious, absolutely atrocious in his first year with Florida. And if he's not better next year, Florida is in Big, big trouble with that contract. Big, big trouble. Because you're not going to be able to get rid of it. He's making $10 million a year. I mean, atrocious in his first season. Giving up like 3.2 something goals per game was Bobrovsky. I mean, that's brutal. Do you take the chance on that happening if you're the Edmonton Oilers and you go out and you sign Braden Holtby to this massive deal and then he comes in and gives up three plus goals a game and has a save percentage under 900 and you go, oh shit, what did we just do? I don't know if that's the best option. The other option is going out and trading for a young goaltender. Somebody... And again, I keep going back to the same the same guys because they are guys that I think look like they're going to be starting good, you know, not just starting goalies in the NHL, but very good starting goaltenders in the NHL. You have the New York Rangers have who have Georgiev and Shesterkin. Probably, you know, one of those guys is going to be the franchise goaltender going forward. The other one is probably going to be traded and go start somewhere else. The Columbus Blue Jackets have Jonas Corposalo and Elvis Merzlikens. One of those guys is probably going to be the franchise goaltender going forward. The other one is probably going to end up getting traded and starting somewhere else. Those are the two, you know, those are teams that I think if you're the Oilers, you could be in talks with. I think, like I've said many times on this channel, I think Shesterkin is probably the guy that the Rangers are looking at to be that next guy. Georgiev's on the trade block. If you're the Oilers, do you go and trade for Georgiev and then have him be the starter? See if he can start in the NHL. He looks like he can be a starter in the NHL and a pretty darn good starter in the NHL. And then have Koskinen be the backup. Or do you go to Columbus? And it looks like Columbus is committed more to Merzlikens than Corpusalo. Do you go to Columbus and say, you know, trade for Corpusalo and have him come in and be the starter and then have Koskinen backing him up? You could go the younger goalie who's maybe not quite there yet route. Um... Or not that they're not quite there yet, but just starting their starter career in the NHL. I think that could be a good option for the Oilers. You could continue to go the veteran route and just keep, you know, keep taking these older goaltenders who are unrestricted free agents and signing them to two or three year deals and just hoping that they can play at that elite level while they're there. Um, Mike Smith obviously played very well for them this season, so that that deal worked. And maybe they can continue to do that type of thing with, with some different goaltenders. Robin Leonard. Robin Leonard. Would you, if you're the Edmonton Oilers, how would I... That, he, I wasn't even thinking about Leonard. He literally just popped into my head. Not really, you know, not that older goaltender yet. But a guy that isn't exactly 24, 25, 26 anymore either. But kind of that guy that you don't won't have to commit Braden Holtby money to. But you could give a four or five year deal to and have, I mean, Leonard's played spectacular the past two seasons. His year with the Islanders and his year this year with Chicago slash Vegas, he was spectacular. Robin Leonard might actually be the best choice for the Edmonton Oilers. Go out and get Leonard. You've got McDavid and Drysaddle leading the way up front. You've got a pretty good group around them, at least a group around them that can win. You've got a solid young defense core. I... 
I was going to leave this open-ended, this video open-ended, but now thinking about it, my pick, if I were the GM of the uh, Edmonton Oilers, if I was Ken Holland and I was thinking about this team long long term and not only winning now, but winning for the next four to seven, eight, four, you know, the next five to six, seven, eight years, Robin Leonard is probably would be my top choice if I were the Edmonton Oilers. I would be looking strongly to try and acquire Robin Leonard. I think Holtby's going to be too expensive and he's coming off a terrible season. I think that's the riskiest of the options. I think going with the veteran goaltender kind of gets old after a while. You don't want to be changing goalies every two or three, every year, every two or three years. You want that consistent guy in net. I think going the younger route is a poss- is a possibility, but you'd have to trade for them, and you'd probably have to give up a, at least one, if not two, pretty s- good, solid assets to, to acquire one of those young guys. And then you're taking the chance that they don't actually become the goaltender that you think they're going to be, and it may not work out. Although I think Georgiev or Korpisalo or Merzlikens or Shesterk and any of those guys I think are going to be solid starting goalies in the NHL. Um, I think though the number one choice and my best choice for Edmonton, I think something they should look at heavily in free agency this year, Robin Leonard. He's going to be a cheaper option than Holtby. He's played spectacular the last couple of years. He looks like he's at the top of his game right now, and he might be able to come in and immediately make this team a Stanley Cup threat and give them the high-level goaltending that you need to make deep runs in the playoffs. And he also isn't old to the point where he's going to be on the downhill very quickly. He can be your goalie for the next five, six, seven years. So thinking about it, as I've just talked my way through this video, if I'm the Edmonton Oilers, I am looking heavily at the possibility of bringing in Robin Leonard to be the starter on this team. With that, guys, like, comment, share, subscribe, follow on social media. All those links are down in the description below. If you'd like to further support the channel, the links to our Patreon and merchandise store are down in the description as well. Keep spreading the word about this channel. Let's keep this thing growing. Thank you very much for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video, and I'll talk to you guys soon.